No, uh, okay. It's um, it's a cross-platform framework. It's uh, quite new. It came into uh, first. Uh, it came out of beta in February. No, actually in summer. Uh, no, February this year. I mean, and uh, it has um, gained quite a bit of traction. It's in the um, top 20 on most star repositories on GitHub. It uses Dart as programming language. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to present this, and afterwards I will do some live coding. And why I'm using the framework. Yeah, so Dart. That's a programming language that has been uh, developed by Google. It's initially made to be an alternative to JavaScript. And uh, yeah, Google uses it for many of their internal um, systems. And they also have something called Angular Dart. Uh, the language itself is quite similar to um, Java, C Sharp, and C. Um, yeah, the language is kind of optimized, uh, but can also be used for servers. Um, and uh, especially for Flutter, it's very well suited for reactive programming and asynchronous programming, which is what Flutter uses most. Uh, so Flutter, that's a SDK or a UI toolkit for developing cross-platform applications. Uh, most framework is platform agnostic, which means that um, what you create in framework will work across any platform as long as um, it has implemented support for um, for that individual platform through a um, very low level API. Um, let's see. So Flutter can compile um, with a JSON type compiler and add a type compiler. What this means is it gives framework advant advantages both how you develop and uh, when, you, um, when you're going to release application. Because when you use the just in time compiler, it will run the code in a Dart virtual machine on the phone or an emulator. And this brings advant advantages when you are um, when you're developing, because then you can instantly reload the code changes um, into the running phone to see what you just changed instantly within a second. And uh, when you use a head of time compiler, you will um, you will uh, compile it into a um, yeah, native uh, APK, APK. So um, so you get native performance. An extension of code will uh, not be Dart anymore. It will have been compiled into native C plus plus code. So here's a comparison between uh, native development, Flutter, and React Native. React Native is also a cross-platform uh, development framework. So Flutter uh, compiles and gives you native performance. And one of the main advantages with cross-platform development is that you only have to maintain a single code base. So one of the main problems with native development today is that you have to maintain two code bases, usually one for Android and one for iOS. And for companies, this is very high cost, uh, and it often is a solution depending on how much mo money the, uh, the customer wants to put into their application. Um, yeah, this, uh, and in native, you have to wait some time to see your code changes. Instant run, it takes often, like, depending on the size of your project, to take everything from seven seconds to a minute, perhaps. Uh, yeah. And uh, an Android is the other content you're using, iOS, Objective-C, and Swift. An interesting thing about Flutter is uh, how you define uh, UI. Uh, in Flutter, you only use Dart to define your UI. You have no XML uh, to define the UI. Everything happens in code. So that's where uh, Flutter uh, differentiates itself. You uh, don't need to manage additional uh, layout files. In 
Yeah. So this is the framework, uh, how it's composed. That's a layered architecture. The framework itself is in the top uh, row. It uh, provides uh, a library for creating widgets, uh, or two actually, one for material design applications, one for Cupertino application, which is what iOS is using. Um, the framework itself uh, sort of takes the task of uh, showing the UI into the framework itself, so it doesn't rely on the native side in that part, because everything is implemented in framework. Um, and when this compiles, um, uh, it compiles into C and C++ code, which, um, yeah, as I said before, makes it more performant. And uh, the thing about this being platform agnostic is that uh, in this part you have a, a better uh, for any platform you want to use Flutter with, you um, can uh, define an interface which tells the framework how to um, display a pixel. And as long as the framework knows how to do this, the framework can be implemented on any platform. At the moment, it only has support for Android and iOS. But uh, it's uh, being worked on getting this framework to work on both desktop and uh, the web. Uh, and uh, yeah, for example, uh, uh, third, uh, or since this is open source, somebody decided to use the framework on Raspberry Pi actually. So they made support for Flutter on Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's not officially supported, but it's apparently an option. Uh, yeah. And uh, in addition, um, there's a lot of theories going around about Google's Fuchsia, which is the new operating system that Google is developing. Many think that this framework will be used for creating um, yeah, applications in that uh, operating system. Um, yeah. yeah uh, the thing about Flutter is that uh, it's, uh, when you're programming, you're defining a, a widget tree. See an example of that in that image to the right. Um, so in Flutter, you have uh, stateless, stateful, and inherited widgets. A uh, stateless widget is, um, it's, it's in, I'm going to go more into this when I'm uh, live coding. But it's simply a widget to define. I can use anywhere in the widget tree to get, for example, a button, button uh, image, or um, yeah, for example, uh, you can define a more advanced widget and have an image carousel or something. Um, see, uh, inherited widgets are kind of cool when you want to. Um, Pass state to other widgets because then you can uh, define uh, some fields in that widget, which every widget below it will have access to if you um, if you call a method to um, get that data in the child widgets. Uh, this uh, allows to prevent some bad um, some bad uh, anti patterns. Like uh, imagine your from constructors for every class you're defining and the parameters are passed to the child uh, uh, constructor, the child widgets below and you're passing the state downwards the tree the, and you avoid that by using an inherited widget which means that the development is much faster and you avoid having to change a lot of code by using that pattern. Um, <coughs> yeah, when you're creating a material design application in Flutter, you usually start with um, yeah, um, a widget called uh, Material App. And within that, you usually have a scaffold, which has an app bar and, um, and a main uh, part for the content you want to display. And this will be elaborated in low coding.
Yeah, and you still have uh, the possibility to have um, uh, native uh, Android and iOS code in the application. We can use something called event channels or method channels for um, for accessing these features. For example, an event channel is a stream of data. For example, if we want to access the sensor um, on an Android phone, you can go into the native code and um, get that data through our event channel. And the method channel is um, yeah similar, but it's only a single method call. You don't get a stream of data. So uh, if there's some uh, framework you're relying on, you can access a method from that by uh, defining some native code. But usually it's uh, best practice to check if there's already a plugin for what you're trying to achieve. Uh, for example, if you want to implement local notifications, it's usually a good idea to check if there's a package for that already. Um, so there's four different cases where you can use feathers. Feather, you can create your own for application. This is done with Dart, and it can include Android iOS code as I stated. Then you have um, uh, Flutter packages, which you can create to uh, include in other Flutter applications. You can find them on uh, yeah, the pub.dart.com, I think it's where the packages are located. And in addition, plugins are basically like a package, but only that they use native code to access um, uh, to access the native features in the systems. And then you have Flutter modu modules, which is kind of interesting, because then you can, uh, for example, if you have an existing Android application, you can use Flutter in, um, in that application without creating a standalone Flutter application. And then have a small section within the Android, in the Android application that uses Flutter. So that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, now I'm going to try some live coding. Hopefully that will be um, yeah, more <laughs> entertaining. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to figure out how I'm going to sit. So I don't have a screen here. <laughs> no. Let us reach. Not enough. Yeah, so this is basically um, it's a standard example that you get to create a new um, Flutter project. The main method that runs your application. And here you see is a material application. It's like a Flutter demo. It defines some team data which can be used to define how your text is going to be displayed in the application. And this is the main um, the main page that's displayed at the start. I'm going to run this now in my emulator if it decides to Okay. Um ah.
And this is launching. It will appear real soon, hopefully. Usually it takes a, a little bit of time for the first build, but afterwards it is much quicker to uh, reload the, um, an application to show the code changes. So, so that code is you had to write it, or it's auto-generated when you generate the project? Auto-generated. Yeah. I think that's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can uh, go through some code before it stops up. No. Okay, it stops now. No. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the other example that you get when you um, when you create a Flutter project. It's a quite simple example. It has a floating action button. You click it, it, it updates the state of this text field. So what is happening here is that um, yeah, this is stateful widget. Can we make the code bigger? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, in a second. Uh, that was sufficient? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is a stateful widget. So you pass the parameters that you want into the constructor here. Uh, since it's inside curly brackets, that these will be uh, named parameters. So it, uh, it quite simply takes a title. And you see uh, the title of the application is uh, here. Mm. Yeah, try to type correctly at least. Mm. And it has a state. And uh, that's a method that you have to override when you create a state for widget. So the state uh, here has one uh, variable that's a counter. And uh, every time you want to update this, you have to uh, call the setState method on this variable. So here you quite simply increment it by one. And uh, in the build method, you see a scaffold, app bar, and a body. The body is a um, yeah, center column. It text you have pushed that button this many times. And the text simply shows the counter. And it's styled with some of the default team data that's defined here in the application. Um, and the floating action button uh, has an uh, action that's executed when you press it. That's the increment counter method. That was just defined up here. So that shows how the um, how the number is is incremented. But uh, enough about the standard example. Now we can um, Okay, um, let's remove everything that was in the default example, or almost everything. Um, so, uh, a random request for what I should be making. No, uh, I'll just show, um, I'll start by showing some, um, I'll show a stateless widget first. I think um, so. Here I'm creating a set of widget. Uh, so let's say that I want to have um, 
Yeah, I want to have a um, sort of a list tile or a list tile for showing um, accounts, account tile. Um, I want this to take a few parameters. I want it to take um, yeah name. Uh, that's of course a string name. Yeah, and I am. Um, Want it to take um, uh, URL with some image. So uh, this should be sufficient for this example. So um, we define a child, which would be a um, row. And we define some children want to display in this um, row. <coughs> we give it, we'll create a container. No, oh, correction. Let's make that. Uh, no, wait. Let's be a container, and the width should be 50, and the height should be 50. And this will take a child. Which would be a image, and the uh, correction it would be image from uh, network. So we'll have um, okay. Um, I think that's the correct URL for that, but uh, yeah, of course we'll do a URL first from there, and let's yeah, and I haven't made the constructor yet, so just as with the um, widget. I showed it before, it defines the parameters in the constructor here. And now I can um, use them, find the name. And the URL. Yeah. And um, let's see how this looks in application. Okay, that looks bad. I don't know or somewhere. Oh yeah, I haven't shown the title actually. Or the name, I mean. That might be a good idea to implement. It shows the placeholder image and the name. I sort of think that the text might be white. So I'm define a text style, set the color. You can use a different color that's defined. Reload again. And oh, it crashed. Hmm. 
I'm sort of wondering if something's crashed now. Because it's not fully loaded. Uh, it should be instant. Yeah, maybe you stop and we start. Uh, Oh, I actually spelled my name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, it's um, it's displaying my image and my name, but it's not very pretty. To begin with, we can add some padding on both of these widgets. And in addition, we can um, add some color to this container. So let's take um, um, I'm thinking oh, and it also takes the alpha value on the color. Might be a bad land for the placeholder image. So let's take. Yeah. And you can, for example, take. Um, you can. Uh, Decorate this, taking a decoration here. Oops, decoration. And you have to give this a color. Okay, and There we go. And uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah. The emulator is kind of big, so that's why there's so much empty space. Um, I could, for example, show you. Um, Start by another emulator, which is smaller. <coughs> and can run it in that one as well. Yeah, and you can see that it's yeah, a bit less <laughs> space in that emulator. Uh, anyway, uh, let's take a look at um, let's create a stateful widget which um, will use uh, this list tile and will create a list view. So we'll create that in the um, okay. Let's first of all create a um, yeah. 
is a bear list view. And um, yeah, we can define some widgets here and we'll take the toy we just created. Yeah, now you see the yeah, list view shows all of these tiles. And um, let's try to change the tile a little bit. Um, Try to um, so now it's inside a widget called dismissible. So if you run, we get an error. Um, so then we can go to Dart Analysis and uh, see that the key is required. We can dismiss this. Um, yeah, and it still has stateless widgets, these tiles, but um, now it might be um, uh, relevant to show some uh, feedback somewhere that a widget has been, um, <coughs> been dismissed. For example, we can um, in the body, we can create um, mm, wrap this inside a column. Stop somewhere. Um, there we go. We cannot find the code. So I'm going to uh, have a um, widget below that's going to count the dismissed tiles. So uh, I'm going to uh, introduce again a uh, counterbar variable. Int um, and I'm going to implement. Um, A callback. So when these are dismissed, I can um, add something to something that will happen when uh, this is called. So I have to add this to a constructor again. 
and uh, the dismissible widget uh, and um, on dismissed. This takes uh, argument. Uh, And here we will um, quite simply call on dismissed. Um, we can have to do that. So we don't care about the direction now, but if we wanted, we could um, have different actions like. Um, no, actually, let's do that. Let's use that and take um, Serena this to uh, on um, uh, type of yeah, I apparently don't know how to spell this miss. <laughs> And right. So now we want to um, check uh, the direction. Not entirely sure uh, how this is. Yeah, so um, if it goes from end to start, that would uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah. So if it goes from end to start, that would indicate a swipe that goes from uh, the right to the left. So here we want to um, call on dismissed left. And here we want to call um, on dismissed right. Still have to call this from the after there. And now we can try to um, see what happens if we add this to the list tiles. Um, actually, this is sort of repeating myself a bit. So I'm going to uh, define the tiles if or enough. Okay. Um, list of widgets. Then we define the um, void callbacks, what we want to do. And uh, we want to create uh, an update that um, updates state before we call that. Actually, I want to create two of these uh, methods. So, um, uh, 
problems. <coughs> and uh, these will take your arguments that they will call set state and they will increment this and now we can call update um, and likewise we do the same for undismissed right Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, I've inverted. <laughs> yeah, so um, then we um, quite simply add uh, files to the list view again. For record, if you're interested in seeing more live coding, you can uh, see some of the conferences that has been on um, Flutter. There's some quite interesting videos from Mobile World, World Congress uh, in the slides. I've linked some of them and uh, I think I can give the slides some audios afterwards and you can upload them. Yeah, great, thanks. Um, so, let's see if, uh, so let's see if this is working. It's not. Uh, it's kind of odd. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we have an exception. So let's see. Um, I don't think it liked that I defined a key with the same uh, what was it? Let's take that out and um, add it to the account file here, key, and we'll quite simply do some, some string inter interpolation here, and add that, and hopefully this fixes it. Yeah, and now it's complaining that there's unbound height. So that means that I need to uh, restrict the column. Uh, give it minimum amount space. And we still have an exception. Um, let me see here. Uh, 
Yeah, so now it's working, but you see that they're all overflowing the screen. So what we're going to do then is that we're going to wrap this inside a single child, single, single child scroll view. And we're basically going to take the column inside here. Then you can see it um, it's working. So since I'm wrapping a list view inside um column, the list we took the focus, so I'll set the primary to false because we're going to have additional widgets um, that will show the number of dismissed tiles. So I'm thinking we do some, I will actually do a row here. We have to have the comma. Then you have children, um, <coughs> click the text. And um, we simply add um, Uh, first of all, let's check if this is working. Almost. Yeah, partially at least. <laughs> um, on this missed handler, that's something I haven't implemented. Let's see, we have the... Um, okay, let's, uh, yeah, okay, that's probably because, yeah, now I've done an error actually. Because since this build me method is um, run every time the the set changes, it actually um, adds the tile again. Mm -hmm. So what I'm actually going to have to do is to do this in the initial state, which is another uh, method you can override. Have the initial state here. And if this is run inside here. And we quite simply have the tile variable there. And that gets populated as the, um, as the widget builds for the first time. So, um, then we. Um, Let's try to run it again and see if that was... Okay. Yeah, so it's not showing the tiles at all. I'm uh, thinking that maybe... Well, it shows one, maybe you need to re... Yeah, that's true. Reload it. Yeah. Yeah, I've introduced a new object, so yeah. it's not, not. Uh, oh, it's probably got confused. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now it's showing. 
So that's um, since I've introduced new objects, that's why it wasn't reloading. Mm. So we can try. Obviously, this is working at least. Can you pass which widget is being removed into the callback? Mm, yeah, could, um, could pass the item that's being removed. Um, so let's see. Um, Yeah, maybe we have a, a, a short break. Yeah. Ten minutes. And then we continue. <coughs> so I will stop. The For example, if you have an integer, mm -hmm. it's not defined. You can uh, write i and uh, if that's null, it will uh, assign the value 55 to it. I see. But if it was already assigned, it will not. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, um, 
We also have operator. Um, um, imagine this object return some uh, kind of uh, type. Mm -hmm. As I say. <laughs> and uh, we have it. Um, Defined, mm -hmm. and then you could have operated like this mm -hmm. to uh, run some methods that doesn't have the same return type but executes something on the object. I see. So it's uh, it's quite good in builder methods. <laughs> Then you can just assign uh, the properties you want to objects mm -hmm. uh, without having to type a new line for everything. I see. So that that line will instantiate some object and then call some methods which have like void, for example, Victor Yeah. yeah. So, um, for example. And then you can continue to nest this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So in Java, you have to declare all those methods to return this, and then you can do that with dots, but the return type has to be the same as the original object. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you also have uh, uh, <laughs> uh, and let's say this class has a field. So we um, <laughs> no, <it's>, uh, <laughs> okay, actually, uh, for example, this class isn't initialized. Mm -hmm. So we want to call this method, but uh, we don't know this. It's initialized, so we can add a question mark. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's only executed if it's not null. Yeah. So, so Kotlin has those constructs. And Kotlin also has this uh, continuation. So you can create something and then call different methods with different different types. But you have to call, like, uh, it's not uh, an operator, like with uh, symbols. It's uh, you kind of says also, or you have like a keyword, uh, which then you use. Yeah. Yeah. So in Kotlin, you can do that. Yeah, in Java, you can. <laughs> it's quite convenient yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Oh, and uh, another thing is uh, to define private variables in Dart. You only add um, lower score and drop the variable name. I see. So you avoid typing private. That's yeah, convenient. I see, I see. So it is enforced that underscore makes it private. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. それ <laughs> 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 I'm <laughs> 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 
So I think it was uh, going to access the index of the element in the list here. Yeah. Um, so it has the children defined there. Um, um, that uh, might actually have been more easier to do that if I used the builder method from the list here. However, that requires some changes. Um, um, and then this weird thing. Because what I was doing um, previously, I just passed a list of children. Mm -hmm. um, uh, without any index, the list doesn't contain an index for this. Mm -hmm. So what... Um, 
So this is another way of defining this. <laughs> Probably a cleaner way to do it and creating that for loop I initially created, I think. However, I should um, have an index field for the account tag, probably. Um, then it might actually be uh, relevant to change this into a function that takes an integer this one as well mm -hmm. so um, this will um, I want to pass the index so now we have a um, function kind of similar to um, Actually, the build method here that takes to uh, that's implemented the same way a function with if context and item number. So uh, now we can um, actually let's change the method to take the index as well. Um, Need this somewhere, actually. And in this method, uh, I take an integer and an index. We can have uh, right and last dismissed. So. And we can add a text field. Um, okay, let's say. Uh, And that change change the account tile to show um, to, 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 to display uh, the item as well. Mm. 
let me actually add that. So, Style this a little bit actually. Can um, no, it's space between. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put a lot to string on this. Somewhere. I'm missing Sam Nicola. So hopefully this will run. Well, I actually got the same error from before. You know, because the builder is called every time, uh, we built. So this might not have been the best solution after all using a builder. So um, uh, okay, let's just revert it to a solution I had. So do you have to use the builder inside the hierarchy, or can you use a builder in its state? I can. You probably yeah, can, can do that. That's yeah. a good idea. You can reuse the builder, but just call it once on the end state. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you have to go revert back your delete. Because yeah. you've deleted the content of the builder. I'm a bit unsure if it will um, will uh, yeah. So let's uh, create a variable uh, list view. And this would be the. Uh, Now we'll try again. Yeah, maybe do the rebuild, not the hot reload. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so. Yeah, it's. Um, So it's um, showing something at least. No, it's not. Mm, that's odd. Mm. 
So probably just going to revert to the for loop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not the best, not the most pretty solution, but. Uh, It's not the most elegant solution, but uh, for this it will work. And hopefully, I get time to show some. Uh, oh yeah. Hopefully, I get time to show some better architecture mm. that doesn't mix uh, mix uh, presentation. Layout. Yeah. I'm just going to check one thing. Well, the danger with live coding is that you never know what what's going to happen. <laughs> no. So how strictly typed uh, that is? Well, I'm uh, using. Uh, you could also use. Not. Mm -hmm. items. However, I um, attempt to use the uh, actual class names because I find that um, um, yeah, Intel type yeah. uh, works better that way. Yeah. Actually, not needed to create a list. That's how we instantiate a list in Dart, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, Nine item number to I. Yeah. And I forgot a semicolon. And I probably need to resync. And I haven't initialized the list. Okay. Um, so actually, here I'm. You have to put the. Yeah. And as you can see, I haven't added the um, index. I'll check it out. Yes, so I can see the index. And um, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, now I'm using the same uh, uh, method for doing two things. Mm -hmm. Might be better to have more methods, but it will work for now. <laughs>
So now we have the um, mm -hmm. item being dismissed up here. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. So now it keeps track of what's mm -hmm. been dismissed. No. However, um, this is of course not the best way to do it since we're mixing uh, presentation with with the UI. Mm -hmm. So another way to do it is to use streams. So I'm going to use a live template to create some code. Um, So um, yeah, we have um, we have these variables, and we can put them in inside of this block. For the state class. Um, Yeah, and we need to create some update methods. We just um, And I've called update method since that this will um, put it into a sync, which is something that goes out into a stream which we can listen to. And uh, by using a stream builder in the UI, we can get the updates. So this should be good. Excuse the typo in this mist again, but. Uh, not that important. Uh, okay, so now we have the we're going to import a class. We we'll call it block. And in, um, in the initial state, we'll initialize it. And we're going to um, use an or override this post method. So the stream don't continue afterwards after activity has been closed. So that's um, Further complicate things here. 
So let's craft it. This was a this with a stream builder. This will take a dismiss state. In stream block.stream and dismiss state this state which is this snapshot dot data and we will um, let's a state and um, Um, then we have to uh, call the FJet methods when, um, when these are called. So uh, this will be changed to block to dot. So if Um, yeah, okay, um, since I'm actually doing this in on, on initial state, I'm actually going to have to save last state in a um, variable up here, which usually shouldn't be required, but uh, I have to do it now. <laughs> Like the index and the same arguments will be passed here. Um, and uh, This one seems okay as well. So now I've separated, um, yeah, separated the uh, core logic from the presentation uh, or the UI, I mean. So let's run it and see if it works. Um, let's call them null because I haven't initialized this, I think. No, that's bad. No, actually, let's use. Uh, yeah, that, that was okay. Do, yeah, um, that's, is it okay if you have null last state? Actually, now we can use this parameter. And. Uh, Or snitch. Yeah. Let's see where that's. Oh, the initial state. Yeah. Yeah. The last state. Initial data. Block dot initial. Yeah. Let's see how. Yeah, now it works. 
Oh, the last dismiss um, is not properly handling the check. Yeah. So, then the question is what's not working? I think it's your the change with the oh. question, question mark. Uh, I think I forgot one thing in the stream builder. I had to save the last state. Since I have some, uh, mm -hmm. since I defined this up in the initial state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think this will work now. I forgot one thing in block, and that was to also call. No, actually, let's. Excuse the typo. D. That uh, I think time is running out, so I'm. Uh, I'm Can I broke it? Oh, hi. Yeah. Copying the parameter. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. There. There is some a small error up there. Some, but, yeah. Uh, quick fix. Spin uh, block. Does it actually make sense? It looks fine. Maybe it was some glitch with the refresh or something. Yeah. No. It Okay, I think that's some application logic called somewhere. Yeah. yeah but time's running out, but uh, at least the state is working to the... It's isolated from the... Yeah. So in the presentation, I, um, I'll, um, I have a link to the GitHub repository. I'll commit this there after I fix that. Error. Yeah. So you can take a look at it if you want. Yeah, perfect. And I will put the slides on the on yeah. the wiki as well. And uh, one last thing, I'm using Flutter for developing a social media application. So kind of if you're using Android and uh, would be interested to take a look at that, that would be most grateful. It's part of the master thesis I'm writing. I'm trying to get participants to uh, try out this application. It's about uh, app goal accomplishment and uh, 
uh, local challenges. So, yeah, up to you if you want to participate or not. <laughs> the iOS is not yet uh, out, it's currently in review, so it's coming soon. So, if you want to be notified when that's out, I have a sign up form for that, so you get an email when uh, that's done. Yeah. So I will I will post it on on Discord once I put the slides up as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, superb. <laughs> yeah. So there's some few slides more about widgets that's good to know and some useful packages and more resources. If you're interested, I recommend you to check out what's what happened on the Mobile World Congress this year. There were some interesting talks there and quite interesting live coding sessions. With Flutter? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are uh, most likely more impressive live coding sessions than what I managed to do. <laughs> Never done live coding before, so I hope it wasn't too bad. So um, yeah, thank you for listening in and hopefully I didn't bore you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I learned a lot. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.